Dr. Jaffe, is EGCG from green tea a more potent zinc ionophore than quercetin? Another very timely, thoughtful question. And first, I'm going to tell you a little story about my contact with EGCG from years ago and continuing, because at the Whitehead Institute, uh, affiliated with MIT and Harvard, uh, I was at that time on the advisory to the Whitehead, and a very important scientist there, whose name is Weinberg, got up and talked about EGCG as an ionophore, talked about EGCG and fitting into a certain pocket of a specific cell that helps remove cancer cells. However, at the end of his talk, he recommended that people drink green tea and white tea that contains EGCG, but not take EGCG alone. So I went to him after the talk and I said, uh, did I miss something? Why, why wouldn't you recommend that people take EGCG? He said, well, young man, <laughs> let me tell you a story. And you go back to the 19th century where there was malaria in India, but the traditional medicinal approach was chincona bark and the people who drank the chincona bark tea, which is quite bitter, uh, were protected from malaria. And so when the British took over India, the doctors wanted the British people to drink chincona bark, and it was too bitter for them. So the reason the gin and tonic were created was because the gin was something the Brits wanted, and they would accept the tonic, which contained originally chincona bark, and then the active ingredient from chincona bark was found to be quinine. Now, quinine can be synthesized and can replace chincona bark, except when you take chincona bark tea, you never get scarring of your liver because there are protective elements in the chincona bark uh, that are not in the quinine. And so they stopped using quinine because it was causing cirrhosis, scarring of the liver. And Weinberg said, if you use EGCG from, say, white tea and green tea, you're using a traditional source with probably some protective factors. And if you take large amounts of EGCG, that's a pharmaceutical. And he wanted proper double-blind placebo-controlled trials to be done for some years to make sure that there wasn't a collateral adverse consequence to taking what I will call large amounts or pharmacologic amounts of EGCG. So the short answer to your question is it's an excellent zinc ionophore. Um, however, there are other better ways from our point of view of getting the zinc in and making it effective in terms of boosting immune and hormonal and many of the functions that the zinc does. And so if you say to me, my uh, beverage of choice or one of my beverages of choice is white and green tea, organic or biodynamic are now available. And I might wanna put in a little ginger, fresh ginger, or I might wanna put in a drop of raw honey. I recommend that as your EGCG source. If you have two cups a day of green tea, you will get about as much EGCG as if you took the typical EGCG supplement. So yes, we want to get the zinc in, but we have many ways of doing that without EGCG. Yes, EGCG is a zinc ionophore or a divalent cation ionophore, as it turns out. Um, however, um, from my point of view, after half a century in medicine, um, when the data shows promise, you do more studies before you, quote, declare victory. And I understand, because we're, the story I told you was from eight years ago. And I've continued to follow that very interesting story. And Weinberg did say, the last thing he said to me was, and when they give me the Nobel Prize, I'll invite you. Because it's a very important piece of work that he did, both in terms of the ionophore and in terms of this little pocket that the EGCG sits in that causes a conformational shift that enhances the natural killer cells and cytotoxic T cells. Um, so it's a, it's, it, it's, a, it's a narrative answer, but the short answer is uh, green tea and white tea, yes. 
EGCG as a supplement, no. Uh, 